My name is Boyd Varty. I think of myself as an artist of experience. My passion is to create transformational experiences for myself and others as a way to explore what it means to truly live. My central exploration is to live on what I would call the track of your life. To me, this is to live courageously towards the discovery of what you are called to and to what life asks of you. So much of how I live has been informed by my passion as an animal tracker. I'm following the trail of my own life and reporting back. This show is a daily broadcast from a treehouse on the Londolozi Game Reserve in the wild eastern part of South Africa. Londolozi is a 14,000 hectare wilderness reserve adjacent to the Kruger National Park. The land is home to lion, leopard, rhino, elephant and buffalo, as well as a variety of other animals. I am your host, Boyd Varty. My goal is to spend 40 days and 40 nights alone in the wilderness to explore the archetype of the mystic in nature and hone my skills as a tracker. These are my daily stories. Day 10. Wayfinding. Journal entry. Today I'm thinking of loved ones in California, Arizona, New York, Maine, Texas, New Mexico, Spain, and England. This morning I walked down into the river and quite suddenly a cloud of orange butterflies encircled me. Above them, an aura of dragonflies, and then higher, a martial eagle circling. For a moment I was enclosed in a series of sentient, concentric, interlocking intelligences. I was a man at the center of a butterfly, dragonfly, eagle vortex. I was a world inside worlds, interdimensional, and I was simply walking in nature. The great excitement of the day is that there are leopards mating in the river. I can hear the telltale growls. I really hope to see them from the tree. In the classic myth Iron John, an adventurer goes out to find why people disappear in a part of the forest. There he finds a pool. A hairy arm reaches out of the pool and pulls the man's dog down into the depth. The man begins the work of bailing out the water of that pool and there, at the bottom, he finds a wild man. In the story, that man captures the wild man and puts him in a cage back in the civilized, socialized kingdom. Our job is to break him out. With his freedom comes more vitality, more life. And here I am, doing that same work in the wild. I'm involved now in purposeful action towards an unknown purpose. I just know to do this. Maybe I know there is an island out there somewhere. The Polynesian wayfinders would sit on the front of a canoe and without any navigational tools feel for an island hundreds of miles away in a mass of water, homing. Now ultimately you must captain your own canoe towards what you intuitively know you can be. But if you are lucky, you might meet men along the way who are like markers of what to strive for in that wild ocean of becoming. Ian Thomas was one of those men for me. Ian is intense. He is disciplined and fit. As a storyteller, he's in a league of his own, but you could say this of really any category where his interests lie. He's a brilliant tracker, a natural teacher, formidable but open. Ian's eyes speak as loudly as his words. They sparkle when he's excited. He likes to dance. He had a dog named Shadow. Shadow was well trained but had a streak. Shadow could not help himself if another dog wanted to fight. Ian would never let Shadow fight, but he liked that part of Shadow that could not be tamed. This told me more about Ian than Shadow. To me, Ian answered to his own integrity, and he had done the work to have a true relationship with that. He has an easy warmth with his wife and children, and you always feel very at ease in their home, like a welcome addition. Once when I was staying with him at their coastal home, we were both reading the story of Iron John. It was like the wild man was alive between us in some way. We were in constant dialogue about it. And I can't really say how it happened, but Ian told me one of the wildest places he knew was the point of a spit of land 
that jutted miles out into the ocean. And the next thing I knew, we were launching into the swell. The point was a 10 kilometer round trip in sea kayak, subject to wind and tides. There was a raw impulse to adventure that took us. It's as if the wild man had plans for us that day. We knew when we were departed that we were on the limits of light. I was no good in the water, but Ian and his son Clyde were supreme and they had confidence in themselves. With men, it has always seemed to me that it's in shared endeavor that we can somehow go beyond ourselves. I like adventures where I'm suddenly learning a lot of things at once. I was learning to paddle well and fast to keep up. I had to balance to meet the swells. The ocean was a totally new environment. I was not paddling fit at all, but had to make do. All of this whilst trying not to capsize. And let me be clear, I'm not talking about a paddle across the harbor here. We sped out miles to that far point. And then for a moment we hung there in the strange aura of vastness. It's as if you were at the doorway of something beyond comprehension, where you knew the ocean could take you. It's a place that I still dream of. And then we turned for home with the fading light. I remember the night arriving around us and the swell building. I remember the sound of the swell. I felt how inexperienced I was on the water. I couldn't help it, but my thoughts went to great white sharks that live in that bay. Dolphins broke the surface near us just at sunset. I remember Ian constantly instructing me and pushing our pace. I was way out of my depth, but right where I should be, very alive, well, me well mentored in that moment by two very skilled operatives in the ocean. I remember Clyde coaching me between sets in the dark to try and get back to the beach in big swell. And I remember when I eventually did get in and capsized, Ian pulling the boat clear of me so it wouldn't smash me in the shore break when I came in. Between us, we understood that we had to go that night to that point. Ian knew it was a journey he could take me on to meet the wild man inside myself. Of course, what I realized later is that it was not so much that dark paddle, but being with Ian that helped me understand. The wild man inside of us is not a savage. He is an initiate of both the dark headlands of adventure that call us, but also to those same realms inside ourselves, so that we may understand the spirit of our gifts and our wounding and how to bring them both to the world with more light. A wild man is probably many things at the same time, disciplined and free, kind and formidable. A wild man would not intentionally do harm, but a wild man is certainly not harmless. When I was younger, I knew a soldier called Irwin. He was a mercenary. He had been active everywhere, and his body had holes in it where he had been wounded in combat. Irwin was the only person I ever heard speak fluent Shangan in a Canadian accent. And Irwin had true personal power. Or maybe it's what I would call power through presence. I remember I once watched him walk calmly through a rioting crowd. It was like you could see the exact edge of his personal energy field. No one would cross it. In a riled up crowd, he was in a bubble. Around him, you knew he knew darkness beyond anything you could imagine. He had been there. He had the kind of authenticity of someone who is acquainted with their own shadow. And as a result, Irwin could go anywhere. Irwin could go anywhere. As I got older, that idea stayed with me. Power through presence meant you could go anywhere. How many men can go anywhere? And I really mean anywhere. A war zone. Watching someone you love in pain and staying in it. The place where you feel worthless. The place where you feel magical, tenderness, stillness, where you can't fix it. That point out in the ocean, to how your father never saw you, to how you could never take away your mother's pain, to the way you crumple when you can feel what someone wants from you and you know that you can't give it, to the way you can't feel, to the place you feel too much, 
to that day when you're pathetic, to that moment when you rise, to the way you lie, to how bored you are, to the feeling, is this it, to the thing you dream of, to this tree, to doing what it takes to become what you intuit you could be, to accepting that you need help, to saying I'm sorry, to saying no, to finally saying yes, In the Hudson Valley, I have sat for hours with my friend Peter and his wife by the fire. Peter is a lot of things, a musician, an activist, a storyteller. Peter has never told me what to do or given me advice, although he has lived much more than me. He has asked questions and on rare occasion made observations from his point of view. But more than that, he has sat with me present and he has shared the joy of his life just by living simply invited me into his world his influence on me has been seismic in that simplicity of shared presence his life has been a vision of what my life could be here is something I guess for all ages and here is why I'm interested in inner work things in life change and if you do inner work, you develop the flexibility to transform with them. You are not locked into your role for value, because those roles will go. If you do this work of homing, of wayfinding, of understanding the process of becoming, you are going to become the sort of person who can unlock other people's lives. Your work, with freedom, and wounding, and magic, and growth, will over time become a presence, that without you trying to, will transform people for the better. An unspoken way about you that heals and grows and informs wherever it goes. Here is something for the ages. If you awaken the wild man inside of you, you will have to break the world's rules for your own integrity. And that is why I'm in this tree. Four zero, out. This has been another episode of the Track Your Life podcast with Boyd Varty. Follow us on Instagram at Boyd underscore Varty, Twitter at Boyd Varty, visit Boyd's website at boydvarty.com or subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast player. Please rate and review this podcast so that more people can find and enjoy it.